Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. So welcome back everybody. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today and this week we're back up on the Bertram and the first thing that I want to focus on is I want to get some support knees underneath these side decks or these gunnels. Now these knees are going to be important for two reasons. The first one being obviously for support. There's just way too much flex. Right now they're currently unsupported and I'd say if I were to sit on this railing there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to bust something. So yeah, that's not cool. Now the other thing that these knees are going to provide is going to be an area, a safe location or a safe area for uh, running electrical lines and hydraulic lines and that kind of thing. So it'll be a place where they can be kept night or neat and orderly. You know, if you have to access them again down the road, you're able to do so. And uh, so yeah, so that's the plan for this week. Now I will admit, you know, coming into this, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it. And there's a few things going on underneath these decks that kind of, well, I guess threw me a little, for a little bit of a curveball for, for a little while. Let me, you know, kind of zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, now I will admit that this is going to be one of the most awkward areas to try in video. But so right now we're looking on the underside of the, the port side gunnel here. Now there are these strips, you know, kind of running down, going aft as well as running forward. Now, what I believe was done originally is that the, the, the side coverings kind of came in and there's screw here, or screw holes here to kind of give me that idea. But the, the covering right here just basically was screwed onto this side and then came down and then landed you know, somewhere you know, along the bottom here. Now, normally you would think that that would be a pretty straightforward thing to just you know, re, uh, recreate. However, what I quickly realized is that the spacing from here to here is different than it is as we move forward. The spacing as we move forward becomes much, much larger. And what that's eventually going to mean is if I'm looking at having, you know, something along like a quarter inch, three eighths inch covering coming down here, that's going to give me a different reveal or a different spacing between the inside of this gunnel to the actual covering. There's going to be, uh, it's the, the, the spacing is going to be much, much larger as we get forward as opposed to what it would be when we get aft. And personally, that's, I don't know why, it just bothers me. I, I, I like to keep things symmetrical and even all the way around. So the solution that I think I've come up with, I've made basically a little bit of a template. Now this is, this uh, plywood here is roughly the thickness of what the side coverings are going to be. It's a little bit thick, but it's fairly close. And this uh, block up on top here, this is what I want to have for spacing between this top lip and where the, it actually starts to meet the side covering coming down. So eventually it's going to have a spacing of somewhat, some, you know, of something like this all the way down. So it's going to pose some kind of, uh, some creative issues as far as how I'm going to, how the knees have to be cut. Basically each one is going to have to be custom, you know, custom fabricated and, you know, and sized accordingly because I want to maintain this space. And I also want the side covering to come down. It's meeting it on this, on the top edge of this radius. That way that'll give me a consistent appearance all the way down going forward as well as aft and it'll also maintain an even space up on top, you know, from the uh, inside of the gunnel to the side covering. Now, at least for me, the reason to have that consistent spacing on the underside of that gunnel up towards the top there is, well, obviously one, it's a little bit of an OCD thing kind of coming into play here, but uh, more importantly, uh, I guess visually, uh, it, I don't think that it would look right having a larger gap towards the front as it would be towards the back. Now, uh, looking forward a few steps, what I'm intending to do is basically have some LED light strips on the underside of these gunnels. So it will be tucked up, you know, in, in through here, shining down so that at nighttime, you know, this entire area or perimeter around the, uh, the, this aft deck will be illuminated. So I, and you can change colors, you can turn it red at night, you know, if, uh, if it's going to be a little bit tough on the eyes. but. Uh, I think that would look really cool, but I want to have a consistent spacing underneath there for running that LED as well as giving me an area to actually secure that, uh, those light strips too. So the, the way that I'm going to be creating these templates, uh, I'm sure that there's maybe a more efficient way or a better way, but this is the way that it worked for me. You know, I've already done one sample strip over here as you can see, or one sample template. 
Now, again, remember here that uh, these knees are eventually going to be made out of the kusa. I'm probably going to take two pieces of a half inch, laminate them together, and then that's what, and glass them over, and then that's what will be mounted up underneath these uh, side decks for the, for the support. Now, as expensive as this kusa is, I want to make zero mistakes. So I'm actually going through, it's a three-step process. I'm making the first template uh, basically out of door skin the cheapest uh, you know, kind of material I've got laying around here in the shop. Once I get that close, then I'm going to take that over to some half inch cheapy plywood and transfer it over to that. Again, make any, any kind of adjustments that need to be done. Once I'm happy with that, then we're going to be transferring that over to the KUSA. But first things first, what I wanted to show basically highlight in this video was how I am going through the templating process because it's as you work further down this deck, each support knee is going to be different. So each one's going to have to be made, you know, custom for that specific location. So let me, uh, let me get some, some of the cheapy door skin plywood cut to rough shape and we'll come up and then we'll come back and walk through how it's done. All right, so just real quick, the way that I'm going to be determining kind of where I want these support needs to be located is, well, right here, as you can see this cutout, I suspect the previous owner did this as part of what they were doing. I, I'm really not sure if this is original or if this was done by them. But this is where the, basically the fuel fill line is going to be coming up, uh, you know, coming down through here and wrapping into the, into the tank. Now, obviously, uh, you know, if, my, if the side coverings are coming to here, that's still going to leave all of this completely exposed. So at least for this particular area, there's going to have to be somewhat of like a bump out uh, removable cover that will cover up you know, that, that fuel line and vent line. So we're, uh, knowing that I'm going to have a, you know, kind of a bumped out cover here, it's, it's going to make sense for me to have another knee here so that that cover has something to attach to. And then between here to there is roughly six feet, so I'm probably just going to split the difference. And I'll be looking at that same situation you know, going aft as well as on the starboard side. So uh, what I'm doing here is, you know, again, this is my template with the, the spacer that I want to have up on top for the reveal in here. I'm just setting it in place roughly where I want it to be. I mean, if I'm, if I, I, I'm certainly going to be able to shift this, you know, in an inch or two in either direction, but, you know, just kind of generally get it uh, to where I want it. Now, if you look on here, I also wrote in one inch increments, you know, all the way up to the top. So the plan is to, again, this is all going to be eyeballed. A little measuring stick, but I'm basically going to come in, let's just say we'll start on station five. I'm just going to take, you know, a depth measurement there. And I'm going to transfer that over onto here at stage or at area five. And this is a whole lot easier if I'm not trying to, if I were on, a, if I were on some kind of a workbench. <laughs> but so then I'm just going to skip every other one. Um, if it seems, if, you know, so I started at 5, I'll go up to 7, 9, 11, and so on and so forth. So I'll just keep repeating this process and trying to keep, you know, this measuring stick as even or as level this way as well as this way as I can. And this one I'm just going to have to eyeball because... I can't reference. <laughs> because I can't reference off of here. Because I want my setback to be the thickness of this block, which is about 
eh, almost two inches, I think. So at this top, I'm going to lay it in here, and I'm going to take my measurement off of this, this surface and not this surface. So hopefully the camera's going to be able to pick this up here. But essentially what I've done is I've just, you know, I've, I've got little ticks laid out on here, and this is going to give me kind of a rough curvature of the inside of that hull. So, you know, since I, I don't have uh, enough space to kind of run this all the way up and out, as well as along down the bottom, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a, a, a curved bow and just kind of follow this and let it, let it extend down. I know it's going to have to come out close to the very, very bottom here, and it's eventually going to have to run off the top. So if I can get a, a curved bow just to kind of follow this, wherever it falls off on the bottom as well as the top, that's just where I'm going to cut it. And again, this is just the initial very rough cut template. So far, what I've done is I've just cut out the, the rough shape. And again, this is still very, very rough. This is going to be refined a few times. But I've cut out the rough shape or the curvature that was taken off of the template that we pulled off of here using this little panel. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is when we made this, this template, whoa, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Damn it. This template originally came all the way down to the bottom here. And that doesn't do me any good because I don't want the template to actually extend all that far. So what I've done is just, again, kind of eyeballing here. I want it to kind of rest right on this lip. So I just kind of eyeballed it here and said, well, all right, it looks like I need to cut the bottom off around, you know, the, the, the level three mark here. And that's what I've done. So now taking this out of the way. Now, when I go and I try to set this in, you know, obviously this template is hitting this block right here. So I need to basically do one of two things. Either cut this out, or I need to make a notch somewhere in here that will allow this to kind of slide up and more or less cradle it. But let's see how we're, how we're fitting here. All right. So this fits up. I've got a nice tight fit down along the bottom here. It's resting right on this lip, which is exactly what I want. And as far as the spacing in here, I've got my one inch or whatever dimension the block this is, inch and a half, whatever. I've got my spacing in through here exactly where I want. But where I'm running into an issue now is that right in through here, it's no longer being supported because, well, it's just, it was cut a little bit short. So again, with, with this being the initial rough template, and I'm short on both the top area right back in here, as well as right along through here, which is going to be resting on here. Now, you may be asking, you know, why am I, why am I uh, wanting this, this support here, to rest on top of this? I, I suspect that this running lengthwise along the side of the deck here is also had, helping to add some stiffness to this deck lengthwise. So I, I don't know that I want to cut this out. And by having this rest on top of here, um, that's bringing my, I guess, my level of purchase out as far as it can go before it actually goes up inside this cavity. So uh, that's, that's my reasoning for wanting to have this rest on top of this, uh, this new knee here. So to figure out what I need to do to, uh, to cut my next um, template, again, this is, and that will be the one that will actually be taken to the CUSA. So what I need to do here is just a very simple fix. And I'm just going to take, I took a, I'm going to take a wooden popsicle stick that's busted in half, and I'm just going to glue it right along in through here, so that that'll tell me when I, when I go to transfer this template onto the next one, that'll tell me where I need to actually cut this, uh, this top edge. And then I'll be able to do the same thing up along in the top here. So while I do realize that, you know, this, uh, at least the way that I'm doing it here, is a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of dicking around, uh, it, this way you are insured though to get a perfect, perfect fit, which, uh, you know, in what, I had to make, what, four or five separate trips off the boat just to do a little slicing and dicing here and there. That's yeah, not too bad. I mean, if I, if I were to just strictly be doing this and not trying to <laughs> be running around with a camera, uh, I'd say I could probably get each knee um, pretty well templated within probably half an hour each. So that's not, that's not too bad. 
So right now I am happy with this and it's about 6.30 at night so I'm going to actually button things up for the night and then tomorrow I'll get this cut out and do a final fitting for what will be the template that we'll be taking over to the Kusa. And well, maybe, well, I'm not sure if you, if you guys want to see me do all the rest of them. It's basically just going to be the same process over and over and over again. <laughs> but uh, eh, we'll see. We'll see. If, I, if I run into something that's going to be rather unique, then I'll film it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a rinse and repeat, so we'll have to wait and see. But until then, have a great night, and I'll see you in the morning. So you know that old saying that anything you do on a boat is always going to take at least twice as long as you think it is? Well, this was no exception. Uh, it's a day and a half later, and I finally I got all the knees that are cut, that are fit, and I, I think they look really good. I'll zoom in here in a minute so you can kind of get a better look at it. But uh, in total, we got one, two, three, four. In total, we got six of them. They're each spaced around uh, about three feet, give or take. Uh, a little bit farther apart as you move aft here, just because it's more. <laughs> As you can obviously see, they're, they're not secured in any way. They're just kind of uh, friction fit right now. Um, the new ones will be, act the actual Kusa knees will be put in with uh, thickened epoxy. So, let me, uh, before any more fallout, let me kind of zoom in with the camera and kind of let you see a better, a better idea of how everything is shaped and, and fitting here. So let's kind of zoom in. Now this is going to be where the fuel fill is going to be coming up because I'm, I'm sitting on, on the on top of the tank right now. But it's going to come up in through here, and then the deck fitting is right there. But uh, the, the fitting on here is pretty good. This is, again, a, a bit more time consuming than what I was anticipating. But uh, all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Um, there's kind of how the, the knees themselves are supporting the gunnels. Now, something kind of interesting, there's only one that I was able to do like this. But that farthest forward one, you see I was able to actually fit a little ear kind of sticking up on there to support a little bit further out, you know, up on here. So not that it really needed it, because uh, that's, that's not too far away from where the bulkhead's going to be attaching uh, there as well. So at least it's gonna, it should be plenty, plenty stiff. Um, but I had the room to do it, so I figured, well, why not? Now as far as how much of a difference there is in each of the knees, depending on their, on their location, uh, it's pretty, pretty significant. Uh, this one being on top is the one that's farthest aft, uh, whereas this one, that, remember with that ear, that's the one that's farthest forward. And with that part done, it's time to do a quick cleanup, and then I gotta start getting set up for doing all the cutting over on the actual Kusa. So I think this is a good stopping point, at least for this video. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, hit that little notification bell, I guess, from what I understand, it actually works. So, <laughs> and if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.